um, today I'm presenting um, a case that we saw in our residency training. So my topic is multiple myeloma in a young patient with spinal cord compression as a complication. I'm thankful to all my co-authors for helping me um, for this. So let's start with the case presentation first. So uh, a 40 year old female who, who presented with abdominal pain since last one day to the ER. Then on examination, we found that there was tenderness present in the right side of abdomen. And uh, this was a significant examination finding. Then we did the initial investigations, labs and imaging. So the labs, the significant findings were that her calcium was high, which was 10.5. Protein was high 10.1. Albumin and globulin was also high with 4.4 and 5.7 respectively. Then due to the severe tenderness in the abdomen, we did the imaging and CT abdomen and pelvis, it showed numerous lytic lesions throughout the axial and appendicular skeleton. So this was a like alarming finding. So to, on, to evaluate further, we did a skeletal survey and that also showed the similar findings of numerous lytic lesions. And then we uh, had some differential diagnosis in our mind. So we evaluated further. We did the protein electrophoresis with immunofixation. It shows the IgG lambda M spike. We did the hemon consultation and they suggested to do a bone marrow biopsy, which we did. And we found that it showed interstitial to diffuse infiltrate of CD138, CD38 positive plasma cells. And they were approximately 50 to 60% of nucleated cells. And this was the confirming the diagnosis for multiple myeloma. So and then after that, um, the hemong was on board. They did a PET scan and that showed innumerable FTG avid lytic osseous lesions and a lesion at T5 that extended into the spinal canal. So after that, patient was discharged and for and follow up was given with a heme on so her treatment was started they started the radiation therapy first and the 2000 cgy was given in five fractions over five days after a few days patient at outpatient clinic she complained of some neurological symptoms that was like back pain and on examination severe tenderness in the back was present so evaluate that we did um, MRI thoracic and lumbar spine and we found a new pathological fracture of T5 vertebra with 4 mm bony retropulsion and 70% vertebral body height loss and severe spinal canal stenosis at T5 level with edema of the cord due to compressive myelopathy. So this was not present before when she was hospitalized. This was something new that... Uh, the as outpatient follow-up she developed. So after these findings, an emergency surgery was done, which was a T4 to T6 laminectomy, and the tumor was removed, uh, and fusion was done from T2, T3 to T7. And we sent that uh, mass for the pathological biopsy, and that showed a dense infiltrate of atypical plasma cells, which showed strong positive staining with CD138 and which also confirmed that it was also like a complication of multiple myeloma that went into her spinal cord. But after that, after the surgery was successful, patient after a few days was started on chemotherapy and the combination was BRD, botizomib subcutaneously and dexamethasone was also given along with lenalidomide and this combination was given in four cycles. Along with this, zolotronic acid every three weeks was also started. So they did a, the hemong did a repeat bone marrow biopsy after a few months, and then it showed a minimal residual plasma cell neoplasm, 0.0047% by flow. So the therapy worked, and the tumor burden actually reduced significantly. And then after a few months, patient had an autologous stem cell transplantation with melphalan induction with engraftment on day 11. And uh, after that patient now is in regular follow-up with the on clinic, hemon clinic, and she has minimal residual disease now. So 
I, I presented um, this case because usually um, like multiple myeloma is more prevalent and common in the older age group. Um, one study showed that multiple myeloma represents approximately 2% of cancer diagnosis in the U.S. And the average age of diagnosis is 69 years. I also um, showed my reference below for this study. And then other studies showed that one author did a study, like he um, re reviewed records of all my myoclinic patients with multiple myeloma younger than 40 years who were seen between 1956 and 1992. And he found that frequency of multiple myeloma in patients younger than 40 and 30 years was 2.2% and 0.3% respectively. And another study by Sharma et al. He uh, found that multiple myeloma patients diagnosed between 2010 and 2015, he reviewed all those patients and found that 7.8% of multiple myeloma patients had a spinal cord compression. So I presented... Um, this study because uh, I, this was a rare diagnosis, like patient, a young patient who is presenting with abdominal pain. We had few DDs and this was not something common. We had the clue when initial labs and imaging showed something and this was something rare, which is not in the literature very common. And patient had like a, a, the treatment therapy, which was actually successful and the repeat bone marrow biopsy showed minimal residual disease. So I wanted to show the treatment plan that we did. And also the third thing is she developed a spinal cord compression as a complication, which is also seen very rarely in a young patient. So we um, like presented like what treatment we gave. And after that patient is doing good right now. So that was my main objective of this study. And like future research can be pointed out, right? If we can find out like if multiple myeloma, how many patients are we are getting disease in like young patients and what treatment strategies are successful. So this would be our like future point of research from this case report. Thank you so much, um, everyone.